Thank you for staying with us. Two years after Nigeria was certified polio-free, the virus has resurfaced in some parts of the country. About 13 states, including Kano, have recorded fresh cases of both type 1 and type 2 poliovirus. Kano appears to be the worst hit, as 106 new cases of the virus has been recorded in 25 out of the 44 local governments of the state. Kanu State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Aminu Ibrahim, says the state government is targeting 3.6 million children below the age of five for polio vaccination. Well, joining me now from our Abuja studio is a public health specialist, Dr. Isaac Egoja. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. How are you today? Very well, thank you. I wonder how you feel about this recent development just two years after we celebrated a milestone with regards to dealing with or totally eradicating polio virus we we'll find ourselves in the situation again well it is uh, the situation is a little bit worrisome because we were very happy we were excited we were um feeling very well, very good as a country that we have been able to eradicate polio. And the new development is, uh, is worrisome and calls for us to do more, especially uh, in view of the methods that we have to use to get rid of this virus. missed it in the process of trying to ensure that uh, we do not have a resurgence of uh, polio virus that opened us up to we seeing it springing up again yes, yes. I, think I think what is what most is important, important is the fact that we have to not only do campaigns that we we have done in the past in order to uh, scale up our coverage and scale up our our immunization process but to embark on uh, routine immunization and to make sure that every child, every child that is born is vaccinated against polio. If we do this in all our health facilities, in all our, our communities, especially in the states where we have seen a resurgence of the uh, virus now, with time we will be able to come up uh, again with, with uh, a joyful information that we have been able to eradicate polio. But until we are able to do routine immunization as a routine, we will not be able to um, get rid of this uh, virus. We've been able to do uh, immunization as a routine that uh, is making us find ourselves here. Yes. yes. What I mean by as a routine is that uh, every health facility especially public health facilities, or facilities where uh, they attend to infants, to, to children, and uh, where there is uh, antenatal service, those type of facilities must have vaccines and must vaccinate all children that are born and uh, make sure that they have their records, make sure that we don't have any child that is left out. And the campaign goes everywhere, to the villages, to everywhere, and every child is covered. When we do this, we will be more sure that we have uh, captured everybody and we are in control. But until then, uh, we cannot guarantee that there will be no resurgence in the future. Could, or what do you think could perhaps have been the challenge in a state like Kanu, where we see that uh, 25 out of the 44 local governments of the state um, have witnessed or recorded uh, the outbreak of this virus, uh, particularly that state. Uh, is there any peculiarities? Yes. Yeah. The peculiarity <laughs> that I think um, we have there is the fact that we have not been able to cover the ground that we thought we covered. If we had been able to cover the ground that we thought we covered, in other words, if we have, uh, have vaccinated every child in Kanu, in every local government, in every community, in every village. And the new bonds, the newborn babies are also, as soon as they come into the world, they are also vaccinated against polio. We will not be having the case that, uh, cases that we have now. We, what we thought we, were, we had done, I think, we had not been able to do. We have not been able to sustain the routine immunization, for example. 
we have not been able to make sure that every child that is born has been vaccinated. We've not been able to, to convince everybody that uh, vaccine, uh, uh, immunization is very important to be uh, undertaken. Convincing. It, it seems that uh, is a major challenge here where we see people have their beliefs. Uh, we see also the aspect of tradition contributing and even religion contributing to, to belief. We also see with regards to even the COVID-19 vaccination, uh, uh, people, a lot of people are hesitant and there are those who are outrightly refusing uh, to take the vaccine. How do we deal with this? Well, I'm glad you, you, you mentioned the case of COVID-19 as an example of people's resistance to, to vaccination. It is unfortunate because when the health authorities keep asking people to be vaccinated, it is because if some people are vaccinated and others are not, it means that those who are not vaccinated will carry on with the problem, carry on with the virus and circulate them, and therefore nobody is protected. The few that are, are um, uh, being vaccinated now, hopefully, will be protected. But how can we be uh, comfortable? When would we be comfortable? When would it be easy for us to talk to ourselves and convince of, uh, ourselves of dangers that are around us? We've seen people die from COVID-19. We've seen people die from uh, um, Lassa fever. We've seen people die from uh, 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 cholera and other diseases. And therefore, it shouldn't be difficult for us to, to convince anybody. And for whatever reason, uh, people should please listen to the health authorities, adhere to the instructions that they are giving. We, if you look at the, uh, at the picture on the screen in front of us, you see a lot of people who are uh, lame because of polio. So it is not an abstract something. It is real. You can see it. You can see victims. And you can see that they are living very difficult lives. Nobody would want to be walking on four limbs when you are meant to walk on two. Nobody would like to, to be on the wheelchair when you are supposed to be walking on your feet. These people are already on, uh, on uh, unfortunate victims. We, will do, we should do everything we can to help them to live good, productive lives. And we should also do everything we can to prevent this from reoccurring. Now, there are those who say that perhaps uh, our risk communication is actually not convincing enough to, one, educate the people and make them see reasons uh, on why they should, you know, be, get uh, their children immunized. I, I think that some people are just being hard-hearted. The messages that have passed around are convincing enough. And I recall that throughout the northern states, the traditional rulers have come out and have tried to also, uh, as stakeholders, convince their people that it is important for, 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 for people to be uh, immunized, especially the children to be immunized, and that there was no more danger as envisaged, as believed by some people uh, in taking vaccination. You, you recall that some years ago there were false rumors about vaccination. I thought that that has been overcome, especially with the contributions of traditional rulers in those parts uh, of the country. The resurgence of um, unbelief, the resurgence of adherence to the uh, guideline or to the instructions for immunization, and therefore the resurgence of polio uh, virus it's a worrisome situation, and it just means that we need to continue to talk to ourselves. We need to continue to embark on uh, social mobilization. We need to continue to embark on uh, health education and sensitization. We cannot stop until we are able to defeat this enemy. Security might be contributing a challenge to sensitization and everything that you have mentioned. How much of a challenge is that? Well, certainly, insecurity is part of it. If you notice, Kano is very close to Bronu State and Yobe State and uh, Jigawa. We've had problems of insecurity in, uh, in, in Yobe in particular and Bronu State. 
And don't forget that our people move from one place to the other. These are the same people, especially Kano. Kano receives a lot of visitors from other states. It's a very busy state. It's a very highly populated state. And therefore, anything that happens in Kano will affect the, ne the neighboring states. And anything that happens in the neighboring states will easily uh, affect Kano because there are people are always migrating, going in and out. And it is not only Kano that is a focus point at this time. I think it is the whole country. We should um, continue to, to, um, to pass the message. We should continue to work on this insecurity issue and make sure that people are safe, people are able to live where they are supposed to be living or where they feel comfortable living, and that people are not forced to leave their, uh, their ancestral homes. And don't forget, too, that when people are running for their lives, immunization is not their priority. Safety, livelihood is their priority. And therefore, one situation affects the other. Right. Now, as it stands, uh, we have a critical situation in our hands. And there are those who say that if uh, nothing is done, uh, this could uh, become a serious one and it could uh, assume a form of uh, little and dangerous wild polio virus. Perhaps you could expatiate on that for us to better understand. Yes. Um, what that means is that if we don't arrest this situation now and polio continue to spread and uh, the level at which we were before we were able to say that we had eradicated polio and we return to that, that part or uh, to, to that uh, past, it will be a very unfortunate one. It will be very embarrassing for us as Nigerians that when we thought that we had uh, uh, conquered polio, we had not been able to, and that the children that we've taught that we have been able to protect, they are still not protected yet. And more worrisome is the fact that we, some of us don't understand why, why we see danger staring at us, and we still don't believe it, and we still don't do enough to get rid of it. Yes, the authorities may be shouting and may be talking, but it is the responsibility of everybody to be conscious of the fact that my own health affects another person's health. If you are not vaccinating, or if you have a baby, and you don't vaccinate this uh, baby against polio, it is not only your baby, it is not only your community or your, your family, it will affect other people because you don't live in isolation. And therefore, one person's responsibility becomes the other's. One person's behavior affects the others. And uh, we should take this seriously as a country, as a people. We should not wait until things go get so bad that uh, we, we start running around and doing what we should be doing to, to save the situation. We passed that stage. There was a time we were doing national campaigns because the, the immunization coverage in the country was very low, especially polio and measles, but we've overcome that situation at that time. We've been able to, uh, we thought, uh, immunize every child, but we now discover that we have not been able to. And unfortunately, like we've just mentioned, the insecurity in the country has not helped matters. People are running away from their homes. People are living very substandard lives. People are just living for how they can, looking for how they can survive, and therefore, the, the, the problem that they have, the health problems that they have, continue to persist. We must have to work on this. So, if we are to approach this and deal with it holistically, what will that be? The holistic approach is this, that every health facility vaccinates children. Every child that is born is vaccinated against polio, because we're talking about uh, polio right now. This is the holistic approach. We should not vaccinate some people and leave others, some babies and leave others. And taking the first dose of polio, for example, does not cover a child. You have to make sure that you follow through, that the, the, the zero dose, the first dose, second dose, third dose are taken, and that every child is protected. And for immunization generally, where you do have covered and taken all the antigens, the last one is measles. You must make sure that at the age of nine months, 
the baby is taken back to the health facility and that baby is giving the measles vaccine. This is the compulsory mandatory approach that we must have to take. Every child is important. Every child should be covered. Every sh child should be immunized. And every community should do the same thing. If we are doing it well in one community and we are not doing it well in another community, we return back to square one. If we are doing it well in one state and we are not doing it well in another state, we return back to square one. Because we are the same people, we are mixing, we are moving around. And we are sharing both the good and the bad. So much public health specialist, Dr. Isaac Egboja, for your time on the program. You're welcome. Yeah.